I hope that you got uh, an over insight about the neighboring countries of Italy. And I think that uh, everybody now is aware that uh, the Middle East and North Africa region is in a, a very troubled uh, destination. But we still have a potential in certain countries like the Gulf Corporation Council. I, a Gulf Corporation Council to whom who doesn't know uh, the, the, the countries are the Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, Kuwait, and United Arab Emirates. Those countries are very well known for their wealth, for oil and gas, and maybe other uh, political influence in our region and even on the, around the world, but they don't know how much they are influencing in the medical and healthcare sector. If we are going to talk about their development, I'm just going to give you an overview, a very quick overview about the development of the, of the region. Um, the governments of um, GCC countries are investing huge amount of money to develop the healthcare sector, which is the infrastructure, the um, hospital facilities, either private or public sector, and the technology. And they are very much advanced. They are, they are like looking around all over the world to seek the most um, important technologies and expertise in, the, um, in each uh, uh, area, uh, in the industry, and trying to attract them to the region. Um, if we are going to talk about um, the GCC in general from now till 2018, we are expecting uh, a lot of leakage in uh, bed um, demand. I'm not going to read the numbers, you can take an overview of the numbers because um, my target point here is to reach why we are still sending patients abroad. So, um, okay. So uh, we are expecting so many new projects to be um, opened by 2000 and, uh, 2020 and 2025. We have huge medical cities operating and um, will start to operate in, in the next couple of years. Those cities, they cover all kind of uh, medical needs which is, you can, you can name whatever medical um, need in, in our industry and you can find it in those countries. We have it like, Mr. Um, we have um, Dubai Healthcare City is one of the most popular, for example, um, uh, healthcare city that offers tax-free um, zone uh, for medical facilitations to start their business there with no taxes and we we have seen recently like um, uh, uh, San Donato they already started their business there to attract more patients VIP patients and royal families and maybe the quality uh, patients to uh, Italy they have started a great investment and they are going to start a new training center which we are going to talk about later on too GCC as a, a, a local market uh, is witnessing a huge increase of patients inbound, mainly to um, Qatar and um, United Arab Emirates, which is uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. The reason is that um, our quality of uh, health care is very high on in high demand for certain regions like Africa. Uh, we know that Europe is not very much open to receive patients from Africa because of the visa or some sanctions uh, or maybe security reasons. So uh, Dubai is opening, uh, or UAE in general, they are opening the door for uh, around a billion patients uh, from uh, Africa and North African region. Um, Dubai is very much, or UAE is uh, mediated in the middle of the GCC countries and um, Middle East. The, most of the hospitals in uh, UAE are, or GCC are accredited, JCI accredited or even the Canadian uh, accredited. So accreditation is very important. We have over than 115 hospitals accredited in Dubai alone. I'm moving to the most important um, slide, which is you want to know where the demands come from. The demand in GCC comes from the high um, number of uh, diabetes and cardiovascular diseases and um, obesity. 
and all comes from um, the life, uh, quality life uh, that we are leading in, in, uh, in this region. We work a lot, we eat a lot, we don't walk, we don't exercise, we don't do lots of activities. And most of the people are, live in GCCR expats, which is foreigners who are living to uh, live and work in, 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 uh, in those countries. They are not residents. So most of them, they, are, okay, they, they care only about uh, how to generate more business and more money. And the locals are more into um, investing in people, so they are really not taking care of their health. So these are ma the main issues that they are facing where they start having uh, um, uh, um, uh, t diseases like obesity or, uh, or uh, cardiovascular diseases. And the problem is we don't have all the proper treatments there. For example, we don't have enough professionals that cover the need in the market. So they always seek um, 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 expertise from abroad to be able to uh, carry on or to, uh, to carry on and uh, just to control those diseases and uh, diabetes related problems. I just want to, uh, to draw your attention to uh, certain diseases uh, that is, uh, we are lacking and we are in need in the region, which is uh, the organ transplant and the cancer and some um, other more mental disorders. Today we were t I was talking with uh, someone, a dear friend came from uh, UK to visit us and um, he gave me some insights and information about the need of mental treatments in, uh, in our region too. Uh, and other um, rehab um, treatments. The problem is that the government of GCC have spent a lot of money on their uh, local patients. So there are certain programs where they sponsor uh, their uh, local citizens to be sent abroad for certain treatments like cancer treatments, organ transplant, um, certain rehabilitation uh, programs that does not, uh, is not available in the country. And most of them are long-staying patients abroad. So the minimum stay would be between 15 to uh, uh, one week to 15 days to three months, and some of those um, even treatments stay for more than uh, six months to one year. And the government is exhausted by sending those patients, and uh, uh, because they they don't have they don't only sponsor the patient, they sponsor even the companions, which is one or two family members, and um, they uh, they sponsor the whole. Uh, Trip, which is from accommodation, uh, transportation, translations, babysitting. So it's almost like a whole package and um, it is really draining the, the economy of the GCC. Unfortunately, for the last six months, almost nine months, um, the governments have um, decreased the number of patients abroad for those reasons because uh, we all know that uh, the oil prices and gas prices have been changing and um, those countries are already involved in other developments in the, in, in the region and they want to use their own facilities to attract more patients, especially from the local market. So the thing, the alternative uh, thing they are doing is um, trying to attract more calibre and expertise from abroad, like uh, surgeons and doctors and nurses uh, to come and to live, uh, to, to, to work and live in, in UAE or in GCC in general. But again, those expertise are facing lots of problems. Um, the, the cultural problem, the, the system, uh, the language barrier, the uh, social and cultural barrier, so they are not able to accommodate to stay there. So they created the new programs which is the visiting doctors or visiting uh, physicians uh, programs. Those um, programs could work sometimes with uh, certain specialities, but uh, most of the time we are facing so many issues, which is especially technical. Most of the surgeons that come from, um, uh, uh, from uh, internationally, um, they either have to have their own a personal team that they work with them inside the uh, theaters or they want to train those teams and in both ways it's too expensive for both parties so for now what is going to happen this is one of the tips that's happening for example Kuwait might send the patient to be operated abroad and when they come back to Kuwait they will be um, um, uh, managed and supervised by the same doctor, by the doctor traveling to Kuwait to visit the patient instead of the patient traveling to the, uh, uh, to the um, destination where he got the treatment. And this is where, again, it's a way of exchanging expertise and knowledge 
uh, between uh, both countries or both regions or international uh, collaborations. Here we have that um, um, uh, the demand of medical treatment. To be honest, again, uh, as my colleague Mert said, we would never be able to uh, have a certain number, how many patients uh, you, they travel abroad on an annual basis. Even the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Defense that are uh, the most uh, um, uh, sending outpatient numbers uh, from this region would not be able to give you the right estimation number. It's always um, uh, an, an indicative number. So for us, um, we can say the percentage of the patients that's uh, between 10 to 15 percent uh, of the outbound uh, 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 patients that go abroad are only locals and the rest are all expats. Why do expats travel abroad for treatment? Unfortunately, again, because they still don't have the belief in the system, the local system of the uh, country of residence. So, uh, for example, uh, we have around 20% of our expats in UAE um, or like GCC are Indians. So Indians, they travel to India. For medical, uh, for medical treatment. Uh, let's say Asians travel to Asia to, for medical treatment. British, they go to back to UK to, for medical treatment. Europeans, they travel to their own country for medical treatment. We still have people from Middle East and North Africa region. Again, it depends on their financial capabilities. If they are able to get um, the, this treatment abroad, they would prefer to uh, find uh, solutions either in Europe or United States. Um, now, where are the, the most um, non, well-known countries that our patients travel to is um, mainly uh, the high cost, which is United States, uh, UK, uh, Singapore, South Korea, and Switzerland. And actually, for example, from my company, I've started working on this in, the, uh, in this industry by 2012. And the most wanted um, uh, uh, treatments are based in Switzerland, although it's a very expensive and a lot of, li little bit a niche market, but we still have um, the, the same uh, patients are maybe uh, referring other patients to go and get a treatment in Switzerland. We still have a little bit of like a cultural and language barrier, and uh, we do have a waiting list for certain uh, treatments, but because they believe in the excellence of the country and the way they are uh, dealing with each uh, patient individually, that is attracting them to uh, to request for the same um, uh, 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 same country all over again. Mid cost for us in in uh, GCC is uh, Spain, Germany, uh, which is uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, destinations for people from GCC, especially for orthopedics, uh, cardiovascular, uh, cancer treatments. So um, the the, fe the very first option, either for the government uh, referring uh, their local patients abroad is going to be Germany, which is the mid-cost and high quality of treatments, or it's going to be um, later on, which is a, a, a lower, uh, not, let's say a lower class, but uh, lower cost, which is Thailand and India. So um, it depends again on uh, what is the patient's uh, medical need and how important his case is. Most of the patient, uh, most of the diseases uh, patients are sent uh, abroad for are more into oncology, urology, uh, uh, pediatric, organ tissue transplant, orthopedics, and, neuro and uh, nephrology. These are the very specified and specialized treatments that patients are getting treatment for abroad. Because, again, as I said, we don't have specialized centers, for example, for cancer treatment. We might get for breast cancer, for lungs cancer, but for liver, uh, for, um, uh, for uh, um, brain cancer, for example, brain tumors, we don't have specialized centers in uh, GCC, which is, can accommodate the number of cases we have. So this is one of the reasons where they uh, look abroad for um, uh, um, uh, centers where they can uh, get uh, uh, those treatments. It could be in Asia, uh, and they do prefer to go to Asia, mainly to Thailand. And then, uh, of course, UK is one of the uh, very first, then uh, United States, Germany. But it depends, again, on their uh, budgets. We have new trends in the market uh, where we um, are witnessing a high volume of requests, which is wellness and preventive medicine. 
people got the awareness that there's still now there's a need for them to be careful about uh, what is going on in their lives and they started to become aware the, about the food they're eating about the lifestyle they are having and we are having high requests for double checks and wellness programs abroad so we are, I know that here we are not talking about only a wellness and um, uh, uh, a preventive medicine, but uh, this is one of the things that um, it could be uh, connected to the medical treatments. For example, if we are talking about uh, obesity and diabetes, it is connected a little bit to weight loss management and fitness management. Um, if we are talking about rehabilitation and physical and mental, it has to do with after surgery rehabilitation programs. Um, we don't have, um, you know, the nature and the facilities for uh, our patients to go back home and get um, a proper rehabilitation programs. We do have physiotherapy centers, but um, we don't have the accredited or international uh, natural uh, wellness um, uh, spas and medical centers that can provide them with those kind of uh, treatments. Each country in, in Europe or, uh, or Asia or states um, has its own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, we know that um, every, uh, all the kind, you, uh, let's say Italy and Milano is receiving large numbers of uh, tourists from GCC, they come here for shopping and they come to see the nature and culture and learn more about the country. But um, I am one of the people that didn't know really um, about the medical and healthcare sector in Italy. I knew that it was good uh, at a certain level in, in, in Lombardy region for uh, the local Italians, but I didn't know that they could be able to offer something for foreigners, maybe neighboring countries. But when I visited uh, uh, some facilities here in, in Italy, in Milano, I was really impressed with the quality treatments that you have with the systems and even the, uh, the, uh, uh, the um, uh, machines that you have and the way you are um, taking the procedures in a different way than we have uh, already uh, an idea of. The thing is, um, of course, the tourist and leisure um, recreation tourism, uh, this is something that we all know about and I don't need to uh, tell you about it. Cultural, history, political, economical, are all connected together. But again, if people doesn't know and learn more about what you can offer, they will not be able to understand um, that you can offer it. Um, the quality add-on services. Of course, um, most of you know about the cultural acceptance. So you, you, do, you already have um, people coming from all over the world. I think that you have over than 20, 15 million uh, tourists coming to, uh, to, to Milano or to, to, to Italy uh, on a yearly basis. So you already have the experience. Um, expertise and soft skills. We are Mediterranean. We are, you, you do have a little bit of like cultural awareness how to deal with, uh, with people from a Middle East, tailor-made healthy per health programs. These kind of like concierge services or understanding of the market could be created through your own um, marketing and PR um, uh, departments. It's about only uh, soft skills of studying and learning about uh, the culture of each um, country you are approaching and trying to attract more patients from. Um, everybody was uh, asking me today when I was doing um, uh, my uh, very short visits to uh, medical uh, providers and they were expecting that because they learned and they heard that uh, in GCC the government covers everything and it's very easy uh, to get patients um, as long as we just uh, show them that um, um, what Italy can offer because they already know Italy and Milano and whatever. Unfortunately, as my colleague Mert also said, and he already um, in, uh, explained to you in very much details, it was very good the way you have already um, uh, explained it. It's not true. It's not something that, you know, you go and visit, uh, uh, for example, the International uh, Patient Department at the Ministry of Health or um, Dubai Healthcare City or Dubai Health Authority or, uh, 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 let's say, um, uh, uh, Oman uh, uh, Sultan uh, Court or whatever. It's not that. It's not about this. You need to prove yourself. You need to prove your capabilities. It's a long-term investment. You, know to show, you need to show your face in exhibitions, in B2B meetings. Uh, you need to show your face. Even 
even on, on TV, uh, to talk about, uh, on media I mean, uh, to talk about uh, what you can offer and what you are offering. Um, we still understand that uh, there is low quality um, medicine in, in, uh, in Italy, but we don't know that you have this high quality uh, medical providers as you had and uh, as we've seen uh, the last two days. So um, for us, for example, we have um, uh, the source of pain for you, the medical treatment comes from three, uh, on three segments. Uh, we have the government. The government of uh, GCC used to sponsor 100% uh, of the treatments, as I said before, and uh, lately it has been decreased for almost more than 50%. Um, but still today, they still sponsor certain um, uh, difficult and critical cases. But again, uh, they will always choose their first um, options is the well-known uh, countries and um, the medical facilities that they have been uh, d uh, working with for years uh, in Germany or UK or India or any other uh, country. But I don't know how close are you to those governments and how much do they know what you can offer to them so they can refer um, uh, your facilities to their patients and um, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, on, on many uh, so many different levels. Uh, we have the insurance, of course. Um, I knew that uh, also, uh, for example, San Donato have uh, already uh, ways of cooperating in the other uh, uh, hospitals too, that is um, uh, cooperating uh, with insurance companies and um, uh, they, can, they will be the first one to be referred to in Italy. So, um, and ensure, uh, uh, we do have around 50% of our um, expats and nationals uh, have international uh, medical insurance. So whenever they are traveling, they can approach um, uh, the medical facilities who are already contracted uh, with uh, uh, Italian uh, facilitators, uh, medical facilities. But again, um, how would they know that they can approach you that is your, um, uh, that is your uh, way of uh, mediating that, either with the uh, insurances or maybe advertising or promoting in a way or another. Self-paying patients, they are um, our target market. Um, uh, for the last six years, I've been working with uh, VIPs, uh, royal families, wealthy people, uh, executives. They do lots of um, uh, uh, international, uh, they do lots of executive uh, health checkups and preventive medicine, and unfortunately, we receive most of our, the cases we receive are only late stages, either cancer treatments or cardiovascular pediatrics, and we always reach to the um, uh, to the medical facilities that are very well known internationally, uh, just to grant that. Uh, our patients are getting the right treatment they are uh, seeking. Um, I try to be very, very fast and just to give you as much as information um, uh, I can about uh, the market and uh, the GCC market. Um, I know that, uh, again, I told you about Italy. That is what is Italy is very well known for and it seems to be that in every presentation uh, it has um, today, uh, I listened to today, everybody talked about that how Milano is very well known for other um, uh, uh, specialities, as we said, the fashion, the shopping, the food, the other things, but not for the healthcare. So today, I hope that everybody who exhibited or attended believes that medical tourism is not a trend, it's an industry. And uh, we believe in this industry. It is connected to all aspects of uh, your economical development in this country and uh, neighboring countries. And I think that you need to invest a little bit of your time and money and efforts to uh, work on promoting your facilities in, um, internationally, not only regionally, because uh, we always look for maybe for always our neighbors don't look to us. They, they, uh, they you know, people come from, people come from all around the world to, uh, I've seen so many Chinese uh, in, in, in Milano, which is actually they are conquering the world. And um, even China is an option for you and the uh, United States and Canada and GCC. I can can't say that uh, neighboring countries are not very important. They are very important, but because they know they can come to you anytime and they know you, it seems to be that we don't need to do lots of efforts, but we need to do uh, more on an international level and you will be able to be reached re uh, locally and regionally. Thank you very much for your time and I hope that...